the kind of students who become anthropologists now and who pass through its initiation by ethnography are distinctive by often having already been where they want to go. For example, as journalists or as workers in NGOs of a variety of sizes and causes. <clears throat> having both experience and knowing languages relevance to the once defining alterity of place of the ethnographic subject. We have very few students now who go to language school before they go to the field. They, ap they absolutely, most of our students are working in languages that they, they, they're bi or multilingual and they're working in languages that, I mean, I'm always happy for students that actually, uh, you know, learns the language crudely before going to the field by going to a language school or something like that. But that's relatively unusual now. Uh, they arrive and we recruit them on the basis of their <coughs> already formed commitment to and curiosity about problems that becoming anthropologists will help them know afresh or more deeply. Thus, regulative norms of classic method bend pragmatically to suit what is brought by contemporary students. The impulse is to push the production of ethnography back into the experience of the field, but it needs its forms of pedagogy for so doing. The prevailing Malinowski and regulative ideals are still very much training in theory and method before venturing into the literally unknown. Instead, experiment with ethnographic form in the studio or charrette expands the imagination for projects to which students come already committed, or yeah, committed. The experimental possibilities increase considerably in postdoctoral revision of dissertations and in the imaginaries for second projects when newly minted anthropologists are on their own. Post-dissertation work and later projects are never so Malinowskian again. But first field work is messy, especially amid networked entanglements of collaborative projects, large and small, already being there highly reflexive and sometimes even paraethnographic in outlook. It might just as well be served by alternative forms and contraptions if only they were encouraged by pedagogical experiment. <clears throat> and then these are some of the early uh, jargon terms that you know, we created, good enough terms to talk about what we had in mind. Third spaces have been evoked in the recent work of Michael Fisher and his efforts to envision a distinctive anthropology of science and technology. They emerge at what he calls plateau moments in fieldwork settings, which are dialogic opportunities for anthropologists when ethical issues get debated and articulated by social actors in process. They've always been there in fieldwork, but his idea is that the collective importance of them for uh, generating uh, ethnographic conclusion is, takes new forms and is far greater and, and somewhat different than in the past. They're, they're not just case studies within fieldwork. They are actually structuring the kind of conceptual apparatus of the project. They're discoveries often. Their emergence suggests alternative performative strategies of ethnographic elicitation. Parasites <clears throat> evoke experiments with the actual staging of such third space events in the spirit of studios rather than seminars in the midst of field work or alongside it as a means of developing lines of thinking or concept work among relevant and willing parties. Third spaces and parasites are specific expressions of and prototypes for the intermediate forms that I have in mind. Platforms and digital experiments with composition, commentary, relationship, uh, reception, micro publics, and textualities. Digital platforms in their design and care are indeed third spaces, becoming primary genre forms for ethnography. They subsume, they subsume text and field work. They also promise to condense many of the functions that I imagine intermediate forms to enhance, if not displace, in the traditional production of ethnographic texts from field work. But they are major collective undertakings involving considerable coordination devotional, managerial, and curatorial labor, and struggle for resources if these do not come externally. The center does not sponsor or produce any of these, but is interested in such projects underway. We are particularly interested in following, for example, the asthma files conceived and nurtured over several years by Kim and Mike Fortune, who have written in detail about the derivation of the design of their platform 
from the lineage of writing culture and more generally of culture theory during the 80s and 90s. What's really advantageous about their writing is this, that they make this, leap, make this bridge. They incorporate what ideas, thinking of certain writers, Derrida, Haraway, many others, from the theory period, the 80s and the 90s, into the, uh, these uh, digital inventions. Uh, some remain small and productively struggle. Others start within or become assimilated by huge, well-funded philanthro-capitalist philanthro projects. So the, the politics of a successful digital platform in collaborative research is a very interesting meta-methodological question of mine. I mean, you could put it together yourself, but it, once you get involved in trying to sustain uh, a platform as a kind of research site, uh, the commitments and the costs are immense.